new indications of just how seriously President Trump is now taking the impeachment inquiry and how seriously he's pushing to keep Republican senators, potential jurors, remember, in line. CNN's Evan Perez is breaking the news. He joins us now. What have you learned? Well, Anderson, uh, one of the things we've learned is that uh, the president is, is so consumed with this impeachment inquiry uh, that he's now calling Senator McConnell as many as three times a day. Now, this is something that the, the, the majority leader uh, has had to deal with before. At the height of the Mueller inquiry, uh, the president was so exercised that he was doing the same thing. Now, what, what he's, uh, the president is worrying about is keeping senators in line. He is worried about disloyal senators, some, something he's already uh, started tweeting about in recent uh, days. He says that some senators are not being uh, loyal enough and that should, they should be holding the line. Now, this is something that McConnell is going to have to be dealing with for the long term, obviously. He wants to make sure uh, senators who are going to be the jurors, should uh, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats uh, impeach the president, he's going to need those people to hold uh, the line. And the president is increasingly lashing out, telling uh, the, the, uh, the, the majority leader that uh, he believes that some of these senators uh, need to hold the line on what the, the White House is telling them to do. He's obviously preoccupied, uh, and I can under, you can understand why. But I must tell you, in none of the reporting about what he's preoccupied with, is there any mention of what's good for the country, the principles we ought to have as a people, what it is he's trying to uphold. It is all about sur personal survival and you know, personally you know, beating the other side. You sat down with George Conway, who, of course, is a Republican conservative attorney, also just happens to be the husband of Kellyanne Conway, a White House counselor. Yeah. Um, you talked to him about this letter that was written by the White House and Pat Cipollone, where they're saying they're not going to cooperate because the whole illegitimate inquiry. I want to play the soundbite for everyone to hear it. This letter, which goes back to the Cipollone letter yesterday. I mean, the absurdity yeah, Let's go of the back letter. to that, because you had strong feelings about oh, it. I mean, what <laughs> it's a piece nine pages. Of, it's just garbage. It's one of the worst letters I've seen from the White House Counsel's Office, and they write very well, and they make good legal arguments. This when was they can trash. I mean, this was trash. I mean, basically, the thrust of the thrust of it is that there are some kind of constitutional obligations that the House has failed to meet, that therefore that that, that therefore render its impeachment inquiry illegitimate and unconstitutional, which is complete nonsense, because all the Constitution says is that the House has the sole power of impeachment. It completely vests the power of impeachment in the House, and the House gets to decide how to go about doing that. All the House has to do at the end of the day is, by a majority vote, vote out a bill of impeachment, which is essentially an indictment. And because it's just essentially an indictment, they don't have to conduct they don't have to conduct hearings at all. They don't have to hear witnesses at all. And they don't have to give anybody the right to cross-examine those witnesses. It's garbage. He makes other interesting points. He obviously doesn't care for the letter sent by the White House counsel to the Congress. He called it garbage, as you heard. He gives Bill Barr, the attorney general, in connection with all of this, a failing grade. Uh, he thinks the likelihood of impeachment, given what's happened so far, is 100 percent. So, you know, he, he speaks in this vein very strongly. It's interesting why, not just because he's, you know, the, the, the husband of Kellyanne Conway, a close advisor to the president, but he's been a longstanding conservative lawyer in the mold of the Federalist Society lawyers that you hear about, who likes lots of things that the president may have done, including the appointments of Supreme Court justices that some liberals may not appreciate. And so for a person like that to say over and over and over again, and come on my podcast and otherwise write articles in newspapers saying that it's, it's enough already, that he's, he's prepared to vote for Democrats over this president because of his lack of fitness and because of his continued violations of the Constitution, that's significant, I think, for that reason. Also der Mann kam auf den Dönerladen zu. Ich habe sofort gesehen, dass das falsch ist, weil er hatte halt äh, ja, ein Sturmgewehr und einen Helm und äh, auf einmal wirft er was aussah wie eine Granate. Es hatte so eine Klebebandfolie drumherum. Ähm, es ist dann auch an Türrahmen abgeprallt, also nicht im Laden gelandet ähm, und hochgegangen. Dann hat er das Gewehr erhoben und einmal in den Laden geschossen, also mindestens einmal. Und alle Gäste neben mir äh, sind gerannt, also ich natürlich auch. Wir waren, glaube ich, fünf, sechs Gäste da drin. Und ähm, ja, der äh, Mann hinter mir muss wohl verstorben sein. 
Äh, und ja, dann, dann ich habe mich nur in der Toilette versteckt. Tonight, a stone wall goes up. Lawyers for President Trump tell Congress there will be no cooperation with the House impeachment inquiry. Also, public opinion coming into focus with new polling on impeachment. It shows Republican support rising for the impeachment inquiry now at 28 percent, sub 21 points since July. And perhaps most importantly, the story itself, what happened, is coming into focus. We have extensive new reporting tonight about how problematic the people close to the president thought his phone call with Ukraine's president was multiple sources detailing the scramble just moments after the president hung up to assess and contain the damage. New reporting as well on a memo written by the whistleblower who first raised the alarm in which we're learning tonight a White House official used the word and frightening to describe that call. And after that July 25th call, according to multiple sources, a freakout ensues. National security officials began talking about whether the president had crossed a line. White House lawyers were notified and a transcript of the call was later put onto that highly classified server. Again, this is new reporting that flushes out what we know about the call and the efforts that followed to secure what the key players either seemed to know or had reason to fear was a quid pro quo with Ukraine. Reporting that adds context to those text messages among the American players and, the Ukra and their Ukrainian counterparts over what was expected of Ukraine namely investigating the Bidens and a conspiracy theory about the 2016 campaign. And now, tonight, we know more about what went on at a crucial moment, which began playing out on the 1st of September, shortly after, about, uh, less, uh, more than a month after that July 25th call. Bill Taylor, the charge d'affaires in Ukraine, the top diplomat, messaging Gordon Sondland, the ambassador to the European Union, and a major Trump campaign donor, not a career, polit not a career foreign service officer. Taylor says, quote, are we now saying that security assistance and White House meeting are conditioned on investigations? Ambassador Sondland reporting, quote, call me. About a week later, Ambassador Taylor tries again, quote, as I said on the phone, I think it's crazy to withhold security assistance for help with a political campaign. And then, importantly, there's a gap of nearly five hours in the conversation, after which Ambassador Gordon Sondland replies, quote, Bill, I believe you are incorrect about President Trump's intentions. The president has been crystal clear. No quid pro quos of any kind. The president is trying to evaluate whether Ukraine is truly going to adopt the transparency and reforms that President Zelensky promised during his campaign, end quote. He then adds, quote, I suggest we stop the back and forth by text. Tonight, a source with knowledge tells CNN that before he sent that text, which sounds a lot like the president's talking points, Sondland, in fact, spoke with the president who told him exactly that, no quid pro quo, which ironically today, the president suggested somehow exonerates him, tweeting, Ambassador Sondland's tweet, which few reports stated, uh, I believe you are incorrect about President Trump's intention. The president has been crystal clear, no quid pro quos of any kind. That says it all. It certainly says something that the president is citing the restatement of his own talking points, which he gave Ambassador Sondland as evidence. In addition, he blocked Sunland's testimony before Congress today, which also says something.